Oh, hi. Welcome to Blue's Clues. No, I don't know what this is. <laughs> I just, uh, I need to do laundry. <laughs> uh, welcome to the video. It is a day and we're making a video. This shirt is too small for me. I thought it was my size, but upon putting it on my torso, it seems like it's not that way. But we're not here for the shirts. We're here for the, what are we here for? <laughs> the food. We're here for the food. Well, it, Thanksgiving is nearly upon us. It is next week. I'm very excited because Thanksgiving is just one of those holidays that for some reason, everyone in society thinks it's okay to just like be completely gluttonous. And that is my seventh deadly sin. Gluttony, that is me, okay? If you put enough food in front of me, I will eat myself to the point of being sick. I've done it multiple times. I personally think it's a talent. Jenna's seen it firsthand. She's very impressed by it. I'm kind of like a dog in that way. When we're talking about a holiday that's pretty much based around eating until you're sick, it's kind of my city here. So welcome to welcome to Thanksgiving episode part one. I think we'll do another one next week because this week isn't Thanksgiving, it's next week. I don't know, there's so, many, there's so many things we could do. It's just the best season, it's festive. We talked about this last week. We're gonna be making some holiday food, which actually doesn't technically qualify as exclusively Thanksgiving cuisine because it fits in a lot of other recipes and meals don't really only happen at Thanksgiving. But I, I think this is a big part of a lot of Thanksgiving dinners and that is cornbread. Cornbread is, well, it's bread and it has a really interesting taste to it. If you've never had cornbread, which I'm sure there's a very small amount of you who have never had cornbread because it seems like a very popular thing that a lot of people like. But if you ever had it, it's almost like sweet. It's a savory dish but you put like butter on it or some sort of other topping that you would put on bread and you can have it with like chili or you can have it as an appetizer, but it has like a sweet sort of flavor to it without being overly powerful and like a dessert. And I think that's cool because first of all, I'm a fan of carbs, I enjoy them. And the other thing about this recipe, for me at least, is it's one of the small handful of recipes that's heavily made up from corn or corn-based ingredients. Uh, and I'm just not a big corn fan, okay? I've talked about this before. It's just not my thing. I'll enjoy some street corn like anyone else, but I'm not, I'm not gonna add corn to my meal when I don't have to. I kind of feel like it's a weird food. And by itself, without like some really strong flavoring or butter or something else, it's just like, it's not that great. I don't really love corn. So this is sort of me being a little bit brave here, okay? I'm venturing into the world of baking and corn. Two things I'm not good at. You want some cornbread? Yes, I love cornbread. Jenna told me to put actual chunks of corn in the cornbread. Yeah. And I was like, no, well, that's fucking nasty. What do I look like? Chili and cornbread. Hey, I'm, I can barely make one thing. How are you gonna expect me to make two things? Chili and cornbread. How about just cornbread? Chili. Please stop doing the chili dance. Chili and cornbread. Cut. Cut. <laughs> you know who else loves cornbread? My mommy loves cornbread. Well, we'll keep some. She's coming next week. Yeah. All right, Debbie Machine, this one's for you. My mommy Boop. likes cornbread. You like it? Let's make some cornbread. We like it. Let's make some cornbread. We like it. Let's make some cornbread. Are you going to put corn in it? No, that's weird. Can corn. you put it on a corn cob? Can you put popcorn on it? What? Cornbread, but instead of the bread, it's a cob of corn. My sous chef! Oh. Hello, would you like cornbread? Would you like cornbread, huh? My sous chef sucks. Why are you breathing so heavy? My sous chef sucks. So does mine, I had to fire her over and over. All she does is steal food. Pete, you can't steal from your place of employment. All right, so step one is you're gonna have some coconut oil out oh. and- Hey, sous chef! <laughs> no, no, it's getting nasty. No, he took such a big chunk. <laughs> Cut. It's a good thing no one's eating this but us because that's definitely against the health code. FDA, don't watch this video. FDA, if you're watching this video, turn it off. Legally, if you're from the FDA, you have to tell me. Everyone's fired. All right, we're gonna preheat the oven to 700 degrees. <laughs> is this too big? Eight by eight pan. Yeah, it's too big. Man. 
There we go. You're gonna get an eight by eight pan, which I think is 22.9 by 22.9. We are gonna use our stand mixer for this recipe, which I'm excited about because we haven't used it in a little bit. We are gonna add our dry ingredients to the bowl first, mix them up good, and then we're gonna add our wet ingredients. Okay, we're baking here. Everybody pay attention. It's very important that you pay attention. Flour, okay, flour. Number one, we're gonna take our gluten-free, all-purpose flour, we're gonna put a cup and a fourth, give or take. <laughs> okay, I think that's a cup. Bam, easy. Easiest cup and a fourth of my life. Uh, cornmeal. You're gonna take this enriched cornmeal, enriched with more corn, and this is gonna be one cup. Look at that, it's beautiful. Cornmeal is in. We're gonna do two thirds a cup of sugar. This looks like two thirds, yes it is. A teaspoon of salt and baking powder. One tablespoon of baking powder, beautiful. That's gonna make it bake. All right, we're gonna stir the dry ingredients up so that they become one beautiful corn style mixture. Um, in addition to all of those flours, I'm gonna add just a tiny bit. Um, I know this is me going off the rails here when I'm baking. I just have a hard time doing exactly one recipe because I feel like, well, our requirements for a recipe to work are kind of unique. We have to make it gluten-free, which means we have to add a little bit of extra muscle to the recipe to stick together. And then also, I don't know, I just also want to do whatever I want. So we're gonna add a tiny bit of expandex. We're gonna add just a touch of almond flour, because again, I have a really hard time following recipes. So just about two tablespoons of almond flour. And I think that's gonna give it a nice texture because almond flour is amazing for baking and it actually adds a really cool flavor to most things, actually. All right, there we go. Beautiful. So the next thing we are going to do, I think I lost the whisk. Have you guys seen the whisk anywhere? Okay, now the dry ingredients are in here. We're gonna get our wet ingredients started and we're gonna begin that with our egg replacer, which again, I'm just, doing the old eyeball. Um, but this is gonna simulate the texture of a raw egg. Well, the good part about this recipe is it's not that hard. You kinda just like more or less put everything into a bowl, mix it all up and just hope for the best. All right, so our egg replacer is ready. We need to melt our coconut oil. This is a third a cup of coconut oil. It says canola oil, but I prefer using this. And we're also gonna need uh, oat milk. It says almond milk, but I prefer oat. We're gonna do a cup and a fourth of this as well. Oh my God, I almost knocked over this whole thing of coconut oil, holy crap. Okay, cup and a fourth of oat milk. Our egg replacer, the weirdest thing in all of our recipes forever. And our coconut oil. And let's just get mixing, baby. Look at that. And now we let our beautiful stand mixer do most of the work. GG's. Try this. Oh, baby. That tastes really good. Like, really good. I got no complaints. That tastes, my only issue is I don't know if it's enough for this big old pan. Like, it might be really flat cornbread if we put it in that pan. I'm thinking we do a different pan. Maybe what we can do is do this little guy. Let's try this. Well, let's try it. I know this is like a, a seemingly simple recipe, but I feel like, well, first of all, I feel like that is exactly how it should taste. Second of all, I feel like this is one of those recipes that can easily be messed up with adding one wrong ingredient. And I'm just really hoping we didn't do that. We'll, we'll see though. Well, this is our beautiful cornbread, circle of cornbread. We're gonna bake it for 20 to 25 minutes and we're gonna stick a toothpick in the center at the end to see if it's done. But that's kind of like it. And it's, it's a pretty simple recipe, but again, you have to do it right. Even though it's simple, the details are everything. You guys wanna, you wanna lick the spoon? You wanna lick the spoon? Go ahead, here you go. I don't know, see you in 25 minutes. And hopefully this doesn't just come out horribly, which it might. You signed up for that though. Okay, well, it's been about 25 minutes. Hey Google, how much time left? 
All right, I'm gonna stick a little toothpick in the center to see if it comes out clean or not. It did not come out clean, but it came out delicious. I would think like maybe three to five more minutes of cooking until it'll be nice and solid in the center. I will say it rose a good amount. Like when I poured the batter in the pan, it was like at least maybe a half inch beneath the top of the pan and it's like puffed completely above the pan. So I think that's promising. And I, I don't know, I'm like trying not to count cornbread before it hatches. What? But I do feel like this might just be one of those recipes that we kind of nailed on the first try. This is the first time I've ever made cornbread. I've never made cornbread. This could just end up being an easy recipe. Like, I don't know, I've always thought cornbread was just difficult for some reason, but judging by how it's gone so far, I don't know, it might be easy. We'll see. If it's easy, then I might just make it again next week and then the week after and then every week from then on until I die. Just cornbread all the time. I'm just gonna eat 100% cornbread diet by my fitness plan. This is my new diet. It's called the corn... Oh, look at her. She's beautiful. Oh my goodness. Have we done it? I think the first thing we have to do here is just appreciate the beauty of what we just made. I mean, look at this. It is a nice looking piece of pastry here. It, it rose a good amount, man. Like I'm surprised at how much it rose up. I don't know, do we cut it? This looks really good. I like how it browned on the top as well. Like it looks kind of how I feel like it's supposed to. So now the question is how do we get it out of here? Interesting. What if we go here? Okay. Oh, it's happening. This is not recommended. This method is not recommended. Oh God, it won't come off. Look at that. Oh my God, we did it. A couple of pieces fell off, but it's okay. Everything's okay. I'm gonna just cut into it because I have no patience and we're here, right? Oh, baby. Look at what we just made. This looks so good. It looks good. When does our food ever look good, y'all? What is happening right now? Why was this easy? And it seems to be sticking together okay. Should we take a bite? What the heck? This was easy. This came out so bomb. I wanna make this for Thanksgiving. Yo, okay. This is it. This is how you make cornbread. It's easy. Easiest baking I've ever done. I'm honestly just kind of puzzled at how easy this was to like really nail. The texture is there. Like it has that light, fluffy, but substantial texture that cornbread has. It's got the perfect balance of sweet and corn and like savory. Top is like browned. The middle's cooked all the way through. Okay, that is muy delicioso. Wow. Oh my God. I'm happy right now. Anytime I turn that oven on, I'm like fully ready for just the world's biggest disaster to occur in this kitchen. And so when it doesn't go completely wrong, I get really surprised and pleasantly so. And I think this is just another example of that. Easy, this is easy. <gasps> oh my God, wait, it's supposed to be a square. What I know, is that? It's a, it's a circle. We had to do a circle because- um, You only had a circle pan? The circle pan was the right size. The oh. square pan was the wrong size. Can I have some butter? Yeah. Mm. It's just like, so simple and perfect. It's so comforting. It came out good, right? I love cornbread. Cornbread is bomb. Mm -hmm. I was just so surprised at how easy this was, to be honest. Like it really wasn't hard. And the texture, how about that? It's so like light and fluffy mm -hmm. and good. I feel like some people really like a, like a gritty cornbread. This is a very smooth, like, Mm -hmm. Cake-like cornbread. Yeah, it's like, exactly, it's cake-like. Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up in the South, so I don't have like any emotional attachments to cornbread. I just like all of it. I grew up in the South no, you of didn't. California. Give me more butter. I was thinking about what to make this week and next week, and I realized last year we did an entire, we did an entire Thanksgiving dinner on your channel. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking we could do some cool sides. Gluten-free and vegan pies. I really want you to try something from here. You want me to make some pies? Yeah, she has like hand pies. Okay, next stop, pies. All right, we'll do it next week. How about that? Blackberry streusel pie. 
pie, sweetheart cherry pie, mm -hmm. summer peach pie, and it's all gluten-free and vegan. And then she makes these little hand pies, strawberry hand pies. You want me to make the Minecraft cake again? No. Mm. I feel like if you're going to like a, I'm short. High five. You're going to like a Friendsgiving or you're bringing food to a yes. Thanksgiving. Yes. This is a really nice thing to bring. Yes. If you guys are going to Friendsgiving, make this and your friends will love you. Well, more than they already probably do. probably in charge of each type of thing, but this is a nice thing to bring. You have to bring butter with you though. Mm-hmm. Just bring butter in your fanny pack so people can dip it in your fanny pack. <laughs> Just like last week, you guys have to split the rest. Okay, so all of you guys divvy this up amongst yourselves and no fighting. Also remember, if you're using MyFitnessPal, there are no calories in this, so no need to even open it up. MyFitness oh. and me. <laughs> Babe, you baked. Bake more, wife. Bake more, wife. I love when my wife bakes for me. <laughs> Whoa! You like when your wife gets all dressed up and bakes for you? I love when my wife bakes for me. Yeah? My wife is so hot. If there's a recipe that fits the criteria of not being too intimidating or technical, but also not being too basic of a food when it's done. This is kind of it. It comes out really delicious tasting. It's gluten-free and vegan the way I made it and it held together perfectly. I say go for it, especially during the holidays. I don't know. I'm gonna try not to eat all of this, but I can't guarantee it. Anyway, see you guys next time on Blues Clues. You can be in the kitchen, okay? I'll give you a little piece. What do you think? What do you think? You're a southern girl. All right, well, I guess that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you next week for pies. Be there, okay? We're doing pies next week. I need you guys to be on time. Bring your supplies. Bring your supplies. Just tune in next week. Tune in next week. Bye. Gonna take a pie away to the danger zone.